G'day guys, welcome back to another one. Today we're gonna I'm gonna go over what I think about this uh, mixer now that I've had a, a bit of use using it and gonna modify it. So um, the mixer itself for what you pay for it, I think it was about 250 Australian dollars. Um, which, I mean, is not a bad price for what you're getting, you know. There's a bit of um, bit in here, like the motor itself is probably the major cost of it. The rest is sort of pressed metal, but um, it's not badly built. It's, um, you know, it's pretty light though, and which is a good thing when you're moving it around. If you had to take it on site somewhere. Definitely not for industrial use. So I wouldn't be using this day in, day out sort of thing. But, um, you know, the odd job here or there, it, it, it's more than capable. Uh, might be a bit small capacity for um, a big job, but for what I'm working for and anything at home, I reckon this this will just do your job. Um, you know, it works. It's easy to use. And, but the only, the only major problem with it is it's really low and um, unless you're tipping it into a bucket it's not even wheelbarrow height so you can't even put a wheelbarrow underneath it to tip it into a wheelbarrow so then you could take it over to where you needed it to get it closer and dump it out of the wheelbarrow you can't do it it's too low and i packed it up um, using bits of timber to a, a reasonable height and even that was a bit low um, to get it a wheelbarrow underneath it to get it to an angle where you could completely empty it. So it's got to come up a fair way. Um, other than that, those couple of things that it's just too low. Um, and well, look for, this is a bit of a gripe, but you don't. You're not going to be wheeling it around everywhere all day. There's sort of no real comfortable way to um, to grab it and wheel it around apart from using this sort of thing. And um, don't know what I could do about that, but um, yeah, it's not real easy to move around or comfortable. I sort of grab it from there, and even that, it's not great, but it works. And this is loose, so that tends to pull off. So um, I suppose I could glue that on there and that won't come off anymore. Um, but yeah, biggest gripe is it's too low. And don't know there's much I can do about it. It's a little stability wise when it's full and your mix is sort of a little, um, once it gets wet enough that it sticks to the sides that it's rotating and then drops down uh, it, it's sort of going like this every time and gives you the indication that it may tip over um, like if it had more in it it might actually tip over um, so could use a wider wheelbase um, I don't really have the time to modify the wheelbase on it what I've been doing is putting a couple of bags of mortar on the wheels to weigh it down but uh, sooner or later I'm going to have to use those bags so um, I may you see this axle is welded in to it so I can't even replace the axle I was going to say I could um, put a longer axle in there and put spaces to get the wheels to come out a bit wider. Give me a bit bigger wider base. But um, uh, another option might be just to drill a couple of holes in the base of this uh, stand and screw it into a, a bit of wood that's wider. Yeah. Something like like that and that'll actually extend the wheelbase that may be a path I go 
because um, and I think I'll do that for now because I really don't have time to modify that and um, the good thing about this is I can keep it a narrower narrow uh, I keep the wheels narrower I can fit it in to store it um, it won't stick out as much so it'd be a lot needed to store and I can easily remove that a couple of screws zip, zip, and she's out and take and remove that so um, and then I've just put it in there now height wise um, I was thinking about getting some box tube and just install it into take remove this black section because that sort of slides over the top of that section and same as with the wheels on the other side and I thought of taking that off putting some box tube in there using these holes as a pilot and just drill through them into the box tube and mirror that on the extent the other the other end of it and that will give me more height but the box tube I've got um, well I don't have a lot of it but it's 30 30 mil and that fits in there and it's very loose so um, sort of moves away from that idea but I remembered I have the new part of this because this was damaged when it, when it arrived and I have the new, they sent me out a new part because it was damaged. But I've used the old part because I, I needed to put it together because I needed to use it. And I wasn't sure how long the new part was going to take to get here. It did arrive fairly quickly, but I'd already had it together. And I thought I might as well leave it on. Because I, I didn't crack the paint when I bent it out. So um, uh, I think it's going to be okay. But I have that other part. And I thought, well, the other part's already got the holes into it. I can attach it to one end I would only have to drill a second hole at the same distance to match up with the leg and that'll give me the height whether it's going to be long enough I don't know we're just going to have to um, take these off and give it a go all right I'll strip these uh, the stand and the wheels off and then um, We'll, uh, we'll just have to connect it and see what happens. All right, back soon. Hello, Dixie. Who's you? Off you go, off you go, good girl. thinking something like that so we'll fit this part down to there so it'll have the gusset close to the bottom with uh, more stability and um, then I might use some of that box tube that I've got Gonna fix it in a different way than you may be thinking because the box tube is loose in there I don't want to just put it in there and drill a hole through because it'll squash it it'll pull this together and um, like it'll eventually pull up but it, it's probably a good six mil gap in there and I can't get box tube the size that I'll just slot into there um, so the alternative is I'm gonna cut the box tube to the width of this and then when I put a bolt through there it will stop this squashing in and um, then I can um, weld another section of that box tube and do the same thing on the other end um, if I haven't explained that well you'll get the idea once I, um, I'm ready to weld it up. All right, so 
We'll fit that to there. Um, and that'll be ready. Okay, so. That should give us a little more height, but we do need to work out if that's going to be high enough. Because once it's welded from the connection point here to there, it's going to be a little hard to extend it. So I'd sort of like to um, mock it up at the height um, to make sure I can get the wheelbarrow in. Um, so. I may have to try and suspend this from the air uh, using my my overhead gantry crane and then um, uh, we can at least see how long this has to get to the point where I can get the wheelbarrow underneath it to tip it out. All right, I'm going to set that up. Okay, I've got it suspended. Um, when I built my shed, I uh, needed a top rail, so I installed some um, uh, 150 C channel up there. That's what the crane runs on, and same as down the other end. And I've got a 180 I beam um, in between that. And I don't know if you can see there, but. Um, there's some four ton bearings behind that round pin. That's what holds the, goes through the hole of the bearing. And that runs on the bottom of the C channel so it can go the full length of the shed up and down. So oh, that's my gantry crane and there's a two ton uh, chain block there. So I've got that suspended. And um, now we can get an idea of uh, how high it's going to be. So it looks like I've got to go up a bit higher. I'm doing this just so it can balance out and take up the slack. Go get the wheelbarrow. Um, that's definitely high enough for filling it for me back and whatever. That's um, just depends on whether I can get the wheelbarrow in there or not. Let's go get the wheelbarrow. Cross your fingers, it's high enough. That's the last hole. I think it might do. At least I know the height, I don't have to make it any higher. This is more than enough. Um, and it's a comfortable height as well. So when I angle it, I'll be able to fill it up. So um, I think, yeah, we don't have to make it any longer. All good, that works well. So I'll uh, move this out of the way and then um, we'll get into making a little, I suppose, adapter to connect the, the original frame to the spare part, part the extension. All right, I'll just tilt this back so it doesn't tip over. And uh, we'll get into it. All right, here we are at the bench. 
and I'll explain the plan to you. Um, I've got these off cuts of box tube and what I plan on doing is I'm going to cut some of this. I've measured the inside of uh, this diameter here and we've got 36 and a half millimeters. So I'm going to cut two lengths to um, 36 millimeters and they should fit in there nicely and allow for a bit of clamp up. And they'll go in in this orientation. So they'll cut and they'll sit in there with the hole matching up with this hole here. I'll then weld either a piece of this 35 into there and another piece of that below there. And that'll also stop the clamping and it'll stop any pivot out of, out of, the, out of the, like if it just for some reason it decides to pivot out like that, that'll stop that because it'll, it'll only go as far as the bolt can pivot. Well, it's probably overkill, but I'd rather overkill and make it more solid than it tips over and makes a mess and more hurts hurts someone or myself. So that's that's the plan I'll do. But we also need a piece up top here. All right, this is going to be actually in there to join, and the same thing down here as we've got up top there to join on to um, uh, the matey part. So the uh, matey part isn't quite as long a gap because that's made for these lengths and the, because you can see the holes are closer together so it'd be a bit closer. Anyway, that's the plan. So we're going to go to the bandsaw. I'm going to cut these. I'm not sure if I've got material long enough in the 35, but we'll see what happens. All right. See you at the bandsaw. Okay, so I need eight of these pieces. Okay, so now I've cut and deburred most of the material I need. I'll show you what I'm planning to do. These small ones, which I've got eight of, are going to be the spaces that bolts go through on the sand part of the mixer. And I'm going to attach a, they will be welded together in this fashion to become one part that's spaced to match the holes on sorry, the top part of the first spacer and then there will be another one welded to the top of that and another two spacers which is something like this, welded for the other half, for the bolt holes on the other half. So it'll look something like that. And uh, so now I've uh, got to get to welding it. Hmm. I think I've got a better way. Okay, here they are, roll it up, it doesn't look like much, I'll clean them up with some acetone, 
and um, paint them up. Back soon. Okay, so here we are, all welded up, all painted up, ready for assembly. So we'll uh, take them over and start putting it together. Hello, Gixie. Right, so here we go. They're both identical, so it shouldn't matter which side they go on. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Here we go. Good deal. Off we go. Go on. Off we go. Come on. Come on. Good deal. All right. Side's all done. I'll do the other side and then I'll bring you back and we'll, we'll have a look. Okay, here we are. We've got it all tightened up and it sort of looks a bit hard to see the light. The other side and um, yeah, sort of all blends in really well. Can't even tell. We are a bit rocky, but um, once I attach that uh, timber to the bottom there, should um, stabilize it a lot more. I think that'll do the job. It still rocks, but it rocks and it stops, if you know what I mean. So um, I'm pretty happy with that now. And uh, we'll see that in use. And just a, a recap on how this thing is performing. Um, if you just want to, for your home use, definitely will do the job. The only drawback is it's very low. Um, I was very lucky in that I, I was able to get another part and, and raise it up, but you could, um, uh, very well do something very similar just with a piece of box tube. Um, uh, you know, what I do, but a longer, longer piece of box tube, uh, and you wouldn't need as many bolts either because, um, because I had to join from here to there. If you were just going from here to to there, you would you'd only need the, another two bolts for the other end because you go from these two to those two. So, um, in a way, it was a little bit more fiddly for me, but um, less material needed, and that'll do the job. And it's sort of all painted the same colour, so it sort of blends in really well. But um, it's going to get all dirty anyway, I suppose. <laughs> but, yeah, that's definitely a lot, lot better height for me. Um, and, you know, to get something at this height, you're paying over double the price of that, that one just to get it higher because it goes to a different design. It goes to, like, a, a, a pole, single pole out the front and, a tri like, a tri axle type thing but so um yeah they, they, they i looked into them a bit higher and yeah, they're charging and these the drums get a lot bigger too um i don't know what it is but um yeah for what i paid for this i'm i'm pretty happy with the way it works i mean it's it mixes that's all it does so um it's doing the job how long it will last i don't know um but the amount of use I'm going to be doing with it is going to be not that much anyway because once I do the pavers, 
there's really no need for it. I may even sell it um, if I can. Uh, just depends if I can find somewhere to store it that's not going to be in the way. That, that's my biggest issue at the moment is is when I, if I buy these big things, I need somewhere to put them. I'm still wondering where I'm going to put that. I've recently just bought a brick cutter as well, which you will see me using because I have to cut a lot of bricks uh, for that job over there. Mainly if where the brickwork is going to meet the left hand side window there that's on the end of the house, the corner of the house there. So I have to do a lot of cuts. Every brick has to be cut for that one. And uh, I have to do a bit of cutting for the other side to pack out to meet the window as well. So you'll see that in, in use too. But this, uh, look, for the price I paid, I think it was about 250 Australian. Um, it'll do the job and um, save you back for mixing in a wheelbarrow. Um, the capacity, I mean, it's, it's a 70 litre, so it's not by any means tiny. A, a 20 litre bag of cement, or uh, as I'm using mortar, fits in there quite well, and it mixes it up. And that's, that's what it's supposed to do. This, um, you know, tipping arrangement here, it works quite well. Um, I haven't had an issue. The only thing is this handle, I need to glue that on. That's not a big deal. Yeah, it is what it is, and the motor works okay. I haven't had any issues with it. It's got a reset button. I haven't had any need to reset it. So that's all working all right. Um, what can I say? It doesn't leak. And the look, the stability of it is probably the biggest issue, apart from the you know not being able to get a wheelbarrow underneath it. But like I said, you can always throw a couple of sandbags or, you know, depending on how much you're doing, a couple of mortar bags in there, but you're always going to, you know, need those those bags of mortar later on. So, um, uh, you know, if you could invest, if you invested in some um, sandbags, uh, you, you'd be golden. Uh, it'll, it'll work really well. Otherwise, um, you know, widen your axle here and they'll give you more stability but i just plan on um using this and i might even i'll just drop a a bag of um uh, mortar on there and that'll help stabilize that even more so but i don't think i'm going to have a problem i'm only going to mix 20 20 uh 20 kilo at a time so um it should should be all right should be all right I mean, it does wobble, and it's going to wobble, but uh, as long as it doesn't fall over, I'm happy with it. Yeah, so, I mean, would I buy it again? Yes, I would buy it again for what I'm doing. Um, if you, if I was going to do this for a living, I wouldn't even bother with this, you know. One, your capacity is probably going to be too, too small, and two, uh, it just probably wouldn't hold up to everyday use you know, running for hours. Like, I reckon the motor will probably last, but um, I don't know if uh, the gearing, because uh, it's only pressed gearing in here, it's only a pressed uh, cutout, and um, I don't know if this would put up with everyday use, you know, over a long period of time. Um, you probably want one that's got like a cast iron ring on them and that's what where the expense comes probably into it when you go up in size is that that they have cast iron um gearing on the back rather than just a hole where a gear slots into as it spins it around so uh that's where the cost comes into it when you step up to something that's more of a industrial type for a tradesman's type tool uh this is more of a diy stuff and it will more than like more than more than capable in doing what you need for a diy all right guys that's it on this um i'm pretty happy with it and you'll see me using it when i start doing the brickwork which may be later today 
but will be in a different episode. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe. I've got um, a few more videos coming up. One on the unboxing of the brick cutter. Um, yeah, and many more to follow with the renos of the house. So thanks for watching again, and we'll see you later.